We finally made it back to the Mediterranean Sea. After six months in the Red Sea, we're so excited to be back in lush green mountains and turquoise waters and be in a place where we're welcome and safe and are free to move about this spectacular place. However, in this episode, we're going to revisit our last few weeks in Egypt, now that we're able to look back with clarity and a bit less stress and emotion. And I'll share some footage with you that I wasn't able to share while we were in the middle of it all. But unfortunately, the Egyptian government prohibited me from filming any encounters with them, their boats, or their borders. But I filmed Keith while he was in the thick of it, and so now he's ready to sit down and share his thoughts on all of it with you. And I felt like I might lose my boat, and I felt like uh, we might be in danger of being imprisoned or something like that. I'd, I'd never, in all the world travels, I'd never was nervous about losing my boat like I was the last week or two there in Egypt. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue Basically made only I'll be saved The toss of the line that I just let flow away All right, so we're sitting here in Kos, Turkey. It's beautiful anchorage, beautiful mountains behind us. It's a little bit chilly. You guys notice I got a different hoodie on. I got the Quicksilver hoodie on. I'm almost point where I'm retiring the Montana State University hoodie. I know, I know. I just wanted to go over a few things. A lot of people ask questions about uh, uh, our Suez Canal crossing. What happened in Egypt? Why, why did we leave Egypt? What were our thoughts on the Middle East? I'm gonna break all that down right now. We're gonna unpack all that right now. First of all, the first question I had was, uh, the, the Suez uh, Canal pilot, there was two pilots and you go halfway through the canal, the pilot gets off and he, he goes and stays somewhere and the next morning a new pilot comes. It only takes total about, to go from one end of the Suez Canal to the other, about 12 hours. So they're just there for half a day and yeah, we give them some food if they want it. Most of them bring their own food and stuff like that. You're not supposed to give any money to them. If they ask for money, don't do it. That's against the law. You can get in trouble, they get in trouble, they can lose their jobs even if they ask for it. They might ask for it in form of a souvenir or something like that, so just don't do that. It's bad for them and uh, you can tip them if you want to, but not because they ask. Once again, for all those who didn't know, it was $1,100 for us to go one way through the Suez Canal. That included pilots, agent fees, all the different things like that. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. The Middle East, the Red Sea, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan, and that whole area and our experience there. We as Westerners, even people from Europe and, and, and Westerners and, and cruisers from around the world, you truly don't understand limited freedom of movement until you go to these places. You can move in these countries around in your yacht, but it's not something they're used to. They're not used to a cruiser showing up there, checking into the country, and then going on their way. And I give you a good example. We just checked into Turkey the other day. All right, we're checked in. Excellent. Easy enough. Easy enough. 20 minutes to check in here cost uh, the agent fee for that was 160 bucks and uh, uh, the visas were 50 bucks a pop. He gave me a cruising permit right there, went to immigration. I mean, it all took less than an hour. I don't have to talk to him again until, or anybody with the Turkish officials until I leave Turkey. And I can go wherever I want, anchor just about wherever I want. I don't have to ask permission. I just have to make sure on the charts I'm not anchoring in a, in a restricted military zone or something like that. And that's the way it is in most of the world. The uh, Gulf states, you know, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, uh, uh, Egypt, especially Egypt, they're not ready for it. They're, they're not ready for uh, cruisers to be there. They want cruisers to be there, but they're not used to the freedom of movement issue. They, they don't know how to deal with it. You know, we'd show up at an anchorage out there, we'd have 20 guys harassing us. I mean, every day there'd be a different set of people harassing us. Hi, what's going on? Well, we are, uh, we are uh, unhooking from the mooring ball because what was legal last time is not legal this time. They made us leave. We've been in Egypt now for what, two, three months? Yeah, a long time. And every time we come to a new port, the Navy and the police, they all come out here and no one group doesn't know what the other group's doing. They, they don't know, they don't talk to each other. 
And so this, this group is telling me I can't be here. I got to leave. I'm a security risk. I don't know what I'm a security risk to. And then, and then, so that's the thing we're doing is we're having to deal, you know, there's just a problem because the Navy, this is a military government here and they, and they run everything. And so they're paranoid. They think we're a security risk. And I guess after two months in Egypt, we finally got to the point where it was, um, it was uh, overwhelming. I mean, every time we took our dinghy ashore, there would be somebody there to harass us, whether it be the Navy, whether it be Coast Guard, whether it be the police, there'd be somebody there asking for our papers. What are you doing here? You can't be here. Where did you come from? Hold on a second. And they detain us for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. The next day, there'd be a new guy on shift and they would detain us as well. We already know. We talked to the Coast Guard. Here, Tawila Point, Coast Guard. Tawila Point, here. Yeah, we talked to them. We have permission to be here. My agent, Felix. Felix agent, they know I'm here. Felix agent. And so it was very, uh, it got very whole, it got very old and very dis disheartening, the, the harassment. Are you ticked off? I am, I'm tired of the harassment. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing here in Egypt is, is the harassment. You know, I try to put myself in their shoes. I try to understand and it just boils down to, I don't know what it boils down they to. They don't trust what they don't know. They, they don't, don't know cruisers. If you don't have a very patient mentality, you should not go to Egypt and spend long-term time there. If you go there to spend a couple of weeks, two or three weeks there, that's great. And then that leads me back to talking about agents. We used Felix Agency, Felix Maritime Agency, one of the best agents we've ever used. And let me tell you something, if you're gonna to go to Egypt and spend time in Egypt, you're gonna need an agent that understands all the bureaucracy and all the rules that the government hands down. Uh, our agent fought for us all the time because there was always some Navy guy, there was always some, some Coast Guard guy, some police, co police, police officer, somebody harassing us that didn't know the rules and didn't know the permissions. And so our agent Felix was always in contact, always, always there always there hammering on these guys to leave us alone. That meant a lot to us. I mean, you, you definitely want to have an agent if you're going in Egypt. Saudi Arabia was wonderful. We love Jeddah, but in the same breath, they're not used to yachts moving around either. They're not, they're not, they're not set up for it yet. Their military's not set up. They don't quite understand freedom of movement. Just like when we were cruising in Saudi Arabia, we could not go ashore. We couldn't anchor and then go walk on shore on some nice beach or anything like that. They're, that's a no-go, that's a, a no-go deal. So there's a lot of control and in, 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 in limited freedom of movement. And to get the freedom of movement to go to all the islands and all the reefs that we did in Saudi Arabia, you had to have an agent to get that done. You have to have a different mindset because it, it, it is definitely something that, that goes away from what you're used to as a cruiser. In the end, in Egypt, the reason we left is because the last uh, two or three weeks we were there, I, I began to feel very unsafe. We put a video out where we, you guys all saw the video where the guy was trying to, to shake us down for some money. And some higher ups in Cairo in the Coast Guard or the Navy saw that and it pissed them off. They didn't like it. They didn't like the fact that we were, we were putting that on video or anything like that. And so they, the word we got, and this is only the word we got, this is hearsay. Once again, this is what people were telling us on the ground. The people who, who knew us, they were saying, the reason you're getting harassed even more now is because you put that video up. And they told the Navy, they told the Coast Guard, they told everybody along the coast of the Sinai to fine us, to, to harass us, to try to take our boat, do something to make our lives miserable. And when I finally got that word, we were in, uh, where were we at? We were in um, Dahab. And I felt like I might lose my boat and I felt like uh, we might be in danger of being imprisoned or something like that there because these guys were unrelenting and they weren't wearing uniforms. They were uh, Coast Guard guys, I think. Uh, never did get the real story out of these guys. You know, like right now, we're heading up to the border of Egypt, the northern border here in the Gulf of Aqaba. And right over the line there, just a mile up here, is freedom, Israel. And I'm not saying Israel's great, I'm just saying that we don't get harassed there. There's freedom of movement. There's nobody trying to tell us we can't do this or we can't do that. And as we go in here to Taba after yesterday's events, we were harassed yesterday, we were threatened yesterday. And uh, by the Navy, the day before that, they wanted to uh, arrest us. They called the guys in Dahab, the Navy did, and told them to arrest us and, and make us pay a bunch of money, you know. No reason. 
for no reason. I mean, we've done exactly what. Uh, we've done exactly. Our, a, our agent has worked hard. The Felix Felix Maritime has done a great job of trying to make this painless. But I can tell you that uh, after two months, two and a half months in, in Egypt, as much as, as as an agent does for you, there's no overcoming the uh, the. Uh, it's fear. They're, they're afraid of us. I, I, I don't. I don't think they're afraid of us. I, I think it's the the institutions are so they don't know. They're not used to cruising boats. They're not used to yachties, and it just becomes exhausting. And and now we're almost in a in, in a in a state of anxiety and insecurity because we don't know what's going to happen here at Taba. We don't know if there's people still trying to shake us down here. And we've been here for two and a half months. I mean, we've we've done everything by the book and and even though someone you know one person says you're good from a government agency and then the next government agency says no you're in trouble we're gonna find you or the next government agency says no you're fine and so and then your agent says you're fine you don't know who to believe you don't know who has the final authority here and that's what breeds the insecurity here in Egypt and if you're gonna stay long term I, I, right now I can't recommend staying long term here because I, I can't even recommend stopping here Stop, get some fuel, and go straight to the Suez and get get out of here. They're, they are not ready for yachties. They're not ready for the... I mean, I've got knots in my stomach right now going in here to Port, Port uh, Taba to, to check out of the country. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's just a bad deal. It's it's not good, and it's... Uh, you know, we've tried our best to, to make this a great experience cruising in Egypt, but... Their institutions will not allow that to happen. They just will not allow it to happen. Their institutions are all about control. They're so wanting to control everything from the Navy to the Coast Guard. They make us write letters, apology letters. They insist that we write apology letters anytime there's a misunderstanding stating what a great time. The misunderstandings are when they come out to harass us and then they want us to apologize for them harassing us. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's the craziest thing, and, and, and we're just tired of it. We want to get out. We want to be done with Egypt, and that's what we're doing. And hopefully here in Taba, we don't have any issues. Finally, I got out of there, and we, we our, our agent, thankfully, Felix, got us out of there, and they got us out of the country, and we didn't have any issues. The only way you can protect yourself is to film. And, and that's the only way you can protect yourself, is to film what's going on. And they don't like being filmed. They're navies, they're police, they're... Coast Guards, they do not like being filmed when they're harassing you, when they're doing anything to you. And, and it's not, you know, you think, oh, they're just asking for your passport. They're asking for your papers. Well, when, when three different people ask for your papers every single day, and then the next day, they ask for them again at the next anchorage, and they ask for them again at the next anchorage, it becomes, it becomes, it, it's just, it's just overwhelming. It's just very overwhelming. I loved Egypt. I loved the beautiful, I mean, the Gulf of Aqaba, the Sinai, Sharm el Sheikh, all of that area, Elguna. What, there, there should be a thousand boats down there. There should be a thousand yachties sitting there every winter. That, I mean, I would, I love that place. The diving's great, but Egypt was tough. Egypt became tough after two months there, three months, however long we spent there. It was very tough, very expensive and very tough. We never did get, in, in Saudi Arabia, we never did get harassed at all. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia was perfect uh, kindness everywhere we went. Nobody ever harassed us there. You never, somebody never came up to you and said, where's your papers? Where's your papers? Where's your passport? Let me see all your boat papers. What are you doing here? So they didn't harass us. They just let us be. Um, except the one time we went on land and they said, hey, you can't go on land. You can't, you can't go on that beach. You can't, you, you can't get off your boat. You have to stay on your boat and be in the water. So that was the only thing we experienced in Saudi Arabia. But other than that, it was a great a great time it was a great adventure i think that they're working on it i think egypt is going to be a great spot saudi arabia is definitely working on it uh, jordan is is there they're they're, they're the close israel is easy israel has 100 percent freedom of movement they just don't have any maritime facilities no marinas no places to dock and, and get anywhere from from weather or anything like that if you're there so once again the people of egypt are super nice and super kind and, and, and Saudi Arabia, I can't say enough about them. A lot of dear friends there, a lot of friends in Egypt. And, and here's the deal, the people on the ground, the Bedouin tribes, in, whether they be in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Israel, Jordan, it doesn't matter. The Bedouins are super nice people. The local people in the local villages, the local fishermen in Egypt, you'd be sitting out there and there'd be all these little fishermen with their nets and all the stuff. They're super nice guys. I'd go out there and talk to them or try to talk to them. They'd offer me tea and and uh, Turkish tea or Egyptian tea, and they were catching fish, and they're really nice people. 
it's just the, the institutions, the government institutions, they are the ones that really made it hard for us. If you do go there to cruise, you can and it can be done, but you better have a lot of patience, you need a little bit of money, and uh, you've got to understand what you're dealing with and, and, and how things are going. I'd, I'd never, in all the world travels, I'd never was nervous about losing my boat like I was the last week or two there in Egypt. I was worried that I was going to be in big trouble there. I was worried that things were going to go south. I had to write letters to the government, I had to write letters to the to the Navy, and it's, it's, it's not good. And it's uh, evening prayer time, so that's what you're hearing. But once again, guys, thanks for watching, and that uh, wraps up uh, what we experienced in Egypt. I think it's great. I think it's a great place to go winter. I think in the next five or ten years, especially once the Egyptian uh, government ministries watch this, they're going to be like, we well, got to do some more changing. And they are changing, and there's a lot of people in Egypt who want it to change. And uh, just make sure you have a good agent if you're going to spend any amount of time there in Egypt because you're going to need it. Thanks for the time, and uh, I guess we'll get on to whatever Renee's fixing to put in this video. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. That's five meters. Here. The question is, can I get in here with that top of the tube? Can I get over the top of those rocks, Jack? Don't hit that one. This is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm gonna get hooked on. Is there anything in here? It ends. Can you walk through there? Oh, man, that climax. Hey, that was fun. There you go. There's a lot of them. Y'all are going to uh, skateboard? Salut. What? Yeah. They're going to skate at some old Turkish ruins. There's a flat spot up there. Oh, you guys didn't cool. see it. Sweet. Mm. Bye. Bye, bye. Lots of ruins here. I took a lot of bees. Went from bats to bees. Climb up this way. Oh, he's going that way. He's going that way. Hey. All these old steps are actually carved into the rock, so they've been here for who knows how long. Huge snails. Look at this guy. Oh, he is big. Look at you. Wow, I made it. Holy cow. Look at that view. This castle. Oh, cool. Literally a castle. Literally. Where'd y'all go? I'm up here. Oh, hi. Hello. Look at that cannon. Wow. Hurricane? <laughs> I'm right here. Bye.